some regular way uh, we check our model result and uh, doing uh, some uh, publishable uh, quality uh, publication of quality like a, a figure uh, uh, for uh, for your presentation or for your uh, publication. And uh, so after after you run the model and uh, you are going to analyze your result and uh, so most of the task can be done uh, use SMS. And uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, to load the project. And then you find your folder and the USMS file and then open that file. And uh, for, for, for this uh, uh, analysis, as you can see in the figure, and uh, still use uh, uh, Stock River as the example. And the, the run we did uh, is uh, August uh, 2009. So regularly, uh, the first thing we, we are going to do is uh, uh, analyzing the time series and the plot time series uh, for uh, model data comparison or for model analysis. And then the first thing we need, we, we will do usually is uh, water surface elevation. So we check water surface elevation, uh, see if uh, <clears throat> the model uh, perform well by checking that to see the if the mass conserve, uh, if the the volume change, uh, what volume change in the model domain are correct. And uh, to load that file, we we import uh, a file called WSE uh, H5 file. And then you you go down your your go down this folder and find the model folder SRLI model folder. And then you 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 go to CMS flow, and then August 2009 is a simulation we did, and then you can find this file here. SRL uh, SRI WSE file. So there's a there's a two way to to see those uh, uh, information uh, one thing uh, we know there's a save point function and before you run the model you can uh, generate a, a feature point on the map module to get a save point and then you specify which variable you want to output and uh, for that one uh, when you run the model it will save all the information you specify at this point. And, and the other way is, uh, that's the way I usually did. I just uh, output everything and for the entire domain. But the, the shortcoming is uh, that uh, use a lot of space. But it is convenient. You can uh, pick any point of your simulation to output your uh, time series at any point. Uh, for this case, I have a, a 2D output for uh, water surface elevation for velocity field. And uh, we, will, we will extract the time series from that data. Because in this case, we have a, a internal, I mean, we have a tidal gate inside the bay at the uh, data measurement. So we want to eventually we want to compare the model results with the with data at this point. So you can see the figure here. So we have a analog location here, and then to extract the model result from this point, 
we need to generate a, a location, a point, and and get what surface elevation from this point. And the way to do that is we go to the map module. And here, uh, first we need to generate an observation point. So, so every property, we duplicate this feature, feature. And then we rename it as observation uh, here. But the type need to be changed from every property. To change the type, you right click the every property, and then go to generic, and then go to observation. So after you, 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 you do this step, you can plot the time series at this point. And to do that, you go to display and plot wizard. And then you come to check time series. And then go next. So here you can see we have uh, some option here. We have scalar. So that's a scalar uh, variable, right? So the, the, the time simulation we did is one month. So from uh, starting time zero hour and to day 30 zero hour. And the, the point is here. So, and then we check this data set, what a surface set, what elevation. And then we get uh, finish. So we get uh, time series plot. And then under here, if you want to directly use this plot, you can, like Excel, you can right click, change the label, and specify your, your, your uh, access number, access feature, and then change the title. Everything you can do on, under uh, Excel, you can do it here. And if you want to use the uh, outside software to plot it, you can export the data, and there's a one way to one uh, one way to do it is, uh, and you can right click the figure, and then export, click export, and then come to here. So you check file, and then. Check text tab, and then give a name here. Give name here, and then export, and then the name, the file will be a ASCII file. So you give the name WSE data file, right? And then you come to this page, and you check. Uh, all those tab, all data, data and the label, and table uh, format. And then it's a point, row versus column is a point subset. And then there you check current uh, precision, and then you check export. So after doing that, a file will be saved. That's uh, the value for the water surface elevation. So open the file, you can see the, the data here. So you can, you can use outside the software to read this file, plot the, the data result, the model result. Uh, there's another way to do it is that you just uh, right click the figure, uh, view value here. And then after you view value, it pop up this window. You can highlight the, the column and then copy paste to your name the file and then and then plot it. And for the this is for the model. For the data, 
for the measure data, if you want to see uh, the result through SMS, you can do it here too. And the way to do it is, uh, so you click this point and choose the point attribute. And then this page pop up. And then you see this is a new measurement. On the module, you pick U grid. And then here, you check observation. This point is point, name is point three. Yeah. So you check option. And then OK. And after you click OK, you you get this file, XYS file. It's also an ASCII file. And then this is a, a measurement to so plot it. And same thing, you can export the information to a, a different file, to an Excel file or any software and to compare with the with your model result. And, and, and here, number three is a, is a comparison between model and the data at that location. But that plot was done by Excel, not uh, on the SMS. And also, uh, Sometimes or a data and the model result has a different uh, time interval. And uh, to do point to point comparison for some uh, statistic analysis. And you can use SMS to sample, use the sample feature to sample the time step to make both model and data have the same time interval. Like for this case, we have a, like a six minutes output uh, for the model. But the data is, is a one hour output. So you want to, I think a, one data, data set maybe is 30 minutes. So you want to sample the model data and to have a 30 minutes interval. So you can see here, the model output is like 12 minutes here, six minutes there, and uh, 30 minutes here. So you can, you can sample every 30 minutes. So to do that, you go to data, data set toolbox, and then choose the sample time step. And then you check the water elevation. That's the data set you want to sample. It show all time steps here. So your start time is zero, day zero, zero hour, and the time step is every 30 minutes. And the ending time is day 30, zero hour. And then you name the file, 30 minutes water level, and then you sample. That way you get a, same time interval between model and data. And then you do your detailed uh, model data analysis. So this is a, a, a time series. So next one, so we, we do contour and a vector plotting. So it's talking about a vector, we know it's a uh, y is the velocity, if you run uh, sediment transport, you got uh, sediment transport uh, rate and also a vector variable. So the way to do that is very similar. So here I, I put uh, velocity uh, as an example. And uh, similarly, we need to first uh, import uh, the velocity file. And uh, after you bring in a uh, velocity file, and uh, you go to uh, display option. And uh, you need to uh, 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 do contour plot here. And uh, 
first thing we do is a uh, is, uh, current magnitude. And uh, so we come to this page. And then we have a face contour here. We take this option uh, for contour the current magnitude. And so this page uh, come up and you need to, uh, I mean, specify all those uh, uh, contour feature here. And uh, all those tabs, you can refine it and then make your selection. And the first is uh, like uh, you can have a linear plot, a, a plot contour line, just to show the contour line. And under that, you have an option to show the color, as a color. And also the contour line above the, above the color uh, shade. And for the color map, if you uh, click here, I think Mitch already showed the, all different color map here. So you can sh check check the color map you like. And uh, next one is the line thickness. The default is one. You can put up to 10, I think, uh, maybe, maybe more. So, and the next one is to specify a range. If you don't check this range, it, it automatically plot the range based on your on your data. So you see here the range is from zero to one point four six meter per second for the current uh, magnitude. So to make uh, the label looks better, so we put a zero to one point five, and then. Your next one is a specified precision. Uh, this will be shown with a legend. Yeah, that's that's the range. Yeah. And the next one, you check a legend. If you want legend uh, aside of, of the contour plot. And then when you check option, you see this window. And you can do a title. Uh, you see, I put a current meter per second here, and you can change the font color, font color here, and the font size, a different a different font, and also the size of the legend. And uh, this one, the right hand side, is a legend location, and there are some default location, uh, up left, up right lower left, the lower right, and also specify your your own uh, screen location. Like uh, we put it here is X is 80% from left to the to the right side and 60% from the top to the bottom, 60%. So that's uh, the legend setting. And then after that, you go to a number number of contour. Yeah, number of contour. And uh, we have a 0 to 1.5. I want to every 0.1 meter per second has one contour line. So I put a 16 here. And uh, the color color um, color map show is a is a hue. Yeah, regular hue color. Yeah. And then down here is a, a bold option. So that's uh, that's for uh, color line. Yeah, you want a thick color line, and you can pick. And the label option is a uh, the which which line you want to be. I mean, it's a it's a bold 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 color. Yeah. So after you do all those steps, you get a. Uh, 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 a color plot here. So this is a uh, current magnitude distribution. You see, we we put the label here, uh, legend here. Uh, we contour every point one meter per second. Yeah, that's uh, the plot looks like.
So next we go to a, a vector, and we can we can plot vector uh, on top of a, a color. We can we can uh, plot the the vector stand along. Here you check the vector box, and then it's come to this uh, uh, vector display option. So this one has a, a display, and uh, it's we pick it here on on a grid. It's on a grid, and space is a uh, is a whole density you want this uh, vector. I mean plotted on the on the figure. And uh, origin uh, relative to bad, and the default here is zero. And we use offset ten. I mean, you can use five. Uh, usually, if you put zero there, it will overlap by the color. If your bottom is a uh, background is a uh, is a color contour. If uh, offset is no offset here, so. Uh, Contour will be overlapped with the vector. You don't see vector well. So you put an offset here, you raise the vector on top of uh, the contour. And similarly, you have a, a range here, and 0 to 1.5. And also, similarly, you have a legend. And that's very similar to the, to the contour uh, legend. And uh, here, uh, for the lens, we choose scale lens, scale lens to magnitude. And uh, we put 30, and then the size, 1.5, it looks like this size. And uh, also, also the, the width, the width is here, width of the thickness of the, of the contour line. Uh, vector line, yeah, and then you can change the uh, color of the vector here, and the, the the last one is the size head head size, scale to length, and this is head uh, size, uh, fifteen percent. If you increase, the head will become the fat, and also uh, the length will be changed. The the head uh, the length of the head will be changed too from here. So this is a the vector map looks like. So after we made made all those uh, uh, selections, and for. For model data comparison, and uh, here we we for Shark River project we also have some uh, uh, current measurement across some transects. So we compare uh, the measurement with the ADCP measurement with uh, with our model, and uh, first. Uh, we have some file here, uh, GIS file, XYZ file. Those are the ASCII file. And first, we import those file to SMS. So we compare model with those data directly on those uh, transects. And those those data are the are the are the GIS file. And you can see from the label, uh, it's uh, August. 2009. In fact, it's August 20, 2009, uh, 1300 hours. And uh, we first bring in those data uh, to SMS. And then we a part of this uh, for the data import. So we check uh, use import wizard. And then we got this window. And uh, for the vector import, so we check the space is uh, uh, separate those columns here. 
and uh, then we we click next. So we come to this window. And the first uh, two columns we, we don't show here is on the left hand side. So because the, the column is uh, many, many columns in the file. But we come to the uh, vector part. So you see we, we have vector U, V, X, V, Y. Yeah. So we, we, we check those box, we get a vector X, vector Y. That's a east, west, north, so, north, south direction. And then we give a name, current. Yeah, so after that, so we, we finish. So those are the scatter points, because that's a point measurement, right? Uh, along the transect. So we need to specify uh, the vector feature at those points. So when you go to display option here, you see the, you check the scatter. You see this is a point, and also you check a velocity vector. And similarly, you specify uh, how you want to show those uh, uh, vector. And the difference from uh, uh, from uh, model output for the data measurement, because this is scatter point. So you want to show the velocity at each node or cell, at each node, that's data point. So you, you make this selection. And similarly, uh, orange, you can uh, pick uh, relatively to bad, pick off, offset value, and then your range is from zero to 100, because this data is uh, has a unit of a centimeter per second. It's not a meter per second. And also, similarly, you do legend, uh, you, you do scale, scale, yeah because of centimeters, so the scale is uh, the ratio is small. And then also spent about those. This is similar to the to the previous window we uh, we already talked about. So so after that, so we see all the measurement looks like along those uh, uh, transects. So this is our measurement at uh, 1300 hours on uh, August 20, 2009. <clears throat> and also for the, for those uh, vector, each point, we can color it based on the uh, amplitude, magnitude, uh, current magnitude. And to do that is uh, you go to display option. And uh, on the point, you use the color, counter color scheme. Well, that, that will show different color based on the current magnitude for this measurement. So this is how it looks like. And uh, you see a high velocity here, and then high velocity in the, relatively high velocity in the middle, and this is color. It's, uh, it's another way to display uh, your, your current. And, and also, uh, we already run the model uh, for August 2009. We want to compare or model result with the data along those transects. The way to do it is uh, we first generate a feature arc on the map module. And this arc should go through the measurement point. You see, I already generated this arc. It's along, along the line, yeah. Uh, one point we need to uh, uh, indicate is this line should be 
approach to the point or on the point as close as possible. Otherwise, it will miss some data point. Yeah. And also, this feature line has a direction. You see the black arrow, that's direction. The direction indicates the positive side. And your, your plotted uh, current direction should be consistent with the, uh, this direction. If uh, in this case, ocean is on the right hand side. So the, the, the direction indicates the flow goes into the bay. So that's uh, positive direction will be uh, flood tide. And if you want to change the direction, you can right click the right click the the arc the arc line and uh, reverse arc direction and also you can redistribute the vertices along the line because that way if you specify a very small space the line will will be much smoother otherwise it's a uh, uh, it uh, has a uh, zigzag, yeah. So after reverse arc direction, and then redistribute uh, vertices, you see here, average space, we put five, five meter here, five meter on the line. So after that, we see the arc uh, change the direction. So now the positive direction is F type, uh, is a point to the ocean, ocean side. Yeah. So for the for the comparison along this transect. We we only plotted the magnitude current magnitude comparison here, and uh, sometimes you auto, auto, model output only have a, a vector doesn't have a magnitude. Uh, to to convert that uh, from vector to scalar for the for the current uh, result. You go to data set toolbox, go to vector to scalar, and see you see the current, you check the magnitude and direction. And also you give a name. And uh, after that, you will get uh, current magnitude and direction. And uh, you see here, right? After that, we get a two extra uh, a data set. Uh, one is the current magnitude, one is the current direction. Uh, also, uh, as I showed early, uh, our model result has a unit meter per second, but the data uh, has a centimeter per second. Uh, to compare these two, we need to convert it to the unit and uh, to be consistent and uh, here it's a uh, it's pretty easy here and uh, you go to data calculator you highlight uh, magnitude and double click it so it will appear here so it's d4 that's d4 data set so divided by 100 so you got a new data set so this current magnitude in meter Right. That way, you you switch the uh, converted uh, the unit, and then later on we can compare uh, between model and data. And so after the do those uh, steps, we we go to that transect. We are going to plot both the model and the data. Uh, 
current magnitude uh, along this transect. And to do that, you go to uh, plot wizard and uh, select the observation profile and then check next. And here you have a, a select coverage of transect and extract the profile from model intersection and then check arc one. And then here you have your, your data set. This is the model result, current magnitude. And down here is the scatter data. So that's uh, the data we read in for August 2009. And also we check the current uh, unit meter. We check this data set. Yeah, we have two identical data set here. And then on the, on the right hand side, you check the time. Because this uh, uh, August uh, 20, uh, 1300 hours. So 19 is a, is a day number. Uh, so model start from day zero. So 19 is a day. August 20th, yeah, and then finish. So you will see uh, the model data comparison. So the smooth line is a uh, is a model result, and then this uh, zigzag line is uh, is data. So you see the the gap uh, for the data. It didn't connect it. That's because uh, at some point or arc didn't sit on the on the data point. Yeah. So the the SMS didn't interpret the value there uh, properly. So if you modify your arc uh, uh, point, it will it will fix this. Yeah. Okay, that's uh that's a time series uh, and uh, uh, contour vector map, and the next one we we doing some sediment transport and morphology change analysis, and for those information we will import the data set uh, has a trans H55. So this file has a transport rate, has a morphology change, and the depth change. Uh, all the information are there. And uh, for sediment transport, what what I did here is a uh, is have a, a transect in the channel. We want to see the sediment transport uh, through the channel here. Yeah. So of course, first first we we need to generate a, a feature arc. Uh, feature arc specifies. Uh, observation like uh, early on we do time series we have an observation point here is the observation arc and you give a feature yeah it's the observation arc and uh, for sediment transport because we specified uh, everything here but uh, the sms do the job and once we bring in the data set to all uh, necessary step, the SMS will take those uh, transport vector and then calculate uh, the flux, sediment flux perpendicular to the transect. And those calculations require us to generate uh, uh, additional data set. So the additional data set with value, constant value one. Yeah. The way to do it is uh, show us this, uh, this page. You see, you first come to data calculate. You use the existing data set, like water surface elevation. And you double click water surface elevation and then check use all time step. So this is, a, you see here is the hourly output. You use all time step. When you double click water elevation, you get a D6 
that's the data set name, right? D6. Or it's all times that. You times zero and plus one. So the result will be one, right? All the, the data set times zero plus one. And then this will be one value. And then you give a name one here. So this is output name, right? And then you check compute and done. So that way you will generate a, a constant data set with value one in the data tree. So after that, you go to plot wizard. You go to plot wizard. And you select uh, observation profile. Yeah, under that. And then you you select the flux here and uh, sediment flux is the coverage and start time, end time, and uh, check the arc. And here you also check one, that's the data set we generate. And also sediment transport rate in this vector plot, vector data set. So you check both and then finish. And then it, it, you have this figure. So that's uh, sediment uh, uh, transport rate cross this transect with the time. Yeah. To get uh, uh, total or net transport cross this transect, we have a, a fortune program. And uh, I think Mitch already put it in the folder. So you can find this uh, uh, source program and also EXE program. You can directly run the program and then have a have an output file there as a model output as an input, All right? And here you need to uh, uh, export the value, uh, those transport value, because this is a uh, it's time series, right? Uh, you can you can do as uh, as we mentioned before for regular time series plot. You can right click this figure and then view value and then copy the value to a to a ASCII file like like here. Uh, it shows the time and the value. Yeah, and then this file you can use as input to the Fortune program. And then after you run the program exe file, you will get. Uh, this output file. So this show and the, the total transport, net transport, growth transport, and in and out. So in is it, a is a is a uh, here here or oh, here is a in is a is a positive. Out is a, is a negative. Yeah. So positive we know it's it's really it's a, it's. A, Point to the ocean side, right? It's it's really but 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 the the program set this way, and yeah, and also has some uh, uh, header line so the time series is uh, 721 point, and length is 30 days. Yeah, so this is a, a sediment total sediment transport across that uh, transect during 30-day simulation. And, and also, uh, we can see the, the channel uh, morphology change and also depth change. So this part is also, uh, we, we draw some, uh, some arc here and on, the, on the map module. And we pick one arc, like uh, arc number two, and see the, see the depth change after 30 day simulation. And uh, uh, this window show the selection you need to do. And the coverage is uh, observation arc we generate on the map module and uh, extract uh, uh, information from model intersection. Uh, here we we, we check number two. Uh, we can have all three. Yeah, two, three, four. Yeah. 
and uh, uh, here we check uh, the depth. We can we can check the depth, and uh, after after the check the depth, so we go to right hand side, specify the time. So which time we want to see the the depth? Uh, here I pick uh, uh, zero, day zero, an uh, initial condition, and also day fifteen, uh, day thirty. So uh, only show day thirty here. And uh, after you you do that, you 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 check finish. So you you come to this figure. So that show the the depth change from day zero to day 30. Yeah, the middle line is day 15. And uh, you see the constant erosion uh, across this uh, uh, transect. And uh, the depth output is a, is a positive value. And uh, to have a reverse, have a negative value, uh, like, like a, we show here, that's a, a new data set. Because the first time I check the depth, it, it generated this figure. And then I go to data calculator. Uh, data, go to data calculator. And then change the sign of the depth uh, data set. So I check the depth, use all times step times minus one. So I get a new bathymetry, like uh, the name is a little bit different. That that one is uh, I just didn't change the name, so so you get uh, this plot. So it looks uh, I mean looks better, right? The the depth is uh, a point to the to the point down here. 